and welcome to tonight's edition of the John Peacock Coaches Show. I'm John Massoni here with Venice High School head football coach John Peacock and uh, coach game one. We had our first opportunity to play a game that counted uh, against uh, quite a talented football team from uh, just up the road at Bradenton at the IMG Academy. Unfortunately, the outcome wasn't what we wanted. It was a 46 to seven loss, but um, I think the Venice football team, yourself, the coaches, the players all uh, accounted for themselves very well against a very, very talented football team. Yeah, and like we said, the reason we're playing the game is we want to, we want to be exposed and uh, learn the things that we need to work on, and that definitely uh, exposed some things for us, and we were able to work on it this week, and hopefully tomorrow night it's going to pay off. Yeah, no doubt, and tomorrow night we are playing away uh, at, at St. Pete High School, uh, which is uh, one of the oldest, or if not the oldest high school, maybe in Pinellas County. It's been there for a long, long time, and uh, their program has been uh, had its ups and downs, and they've been, they've been, we've played them in the playoffs twice, and now we're playing in the regular season, so uh, I'm sure they're going to have some some talented players as well. Yes, they're all. They have a great coach, Coach Fabrizio, does a great job with them. And like you said, we played them in the playoff twice. Once one year they knocked us out in 2009 when we were kind of expected to yeah. compete for a state championship in the first round. And um, Manatee, actually the runner up in our district, ended up playing for a state championship that year. And then the following year, St. Pete had one of the best teams they've ever had at school history. Undefeated when we Undefeated, played them, yeah. 10 and 0, and we went up there and we were able to knock them off um, and, and beat them. So we've had some nice competitive games and uh, we're, we're gonna be, they're gonna be introducing a new field turf tomorrow night, yeah. um, brand new. Um, they're gonna be celebrating that tomorrow night when we play them. So it's a beautiful, it looks beautiful on film at least, and uh, we're, we're excited to, to be able to play on it no for doubt, the first time. No doubt. Um, Going back to the IMG game, everybody, you know, again, very physical football team, uh, very talented football team. We came out of it pretty, I mean, like I said, you said lessons learned. Uh, you got some things that you, need, you could work on. Everybody came out healthy for the most part, other than, I think, other than the normal dings and, and yeah, bangs. Yeah, no, no injuries during the game. Uh, our kids played hard. You know, we were able to, we were able to move, you know, move the ball a little bit. It wasn't, you know, you look at it and the score was a little worse than it was the first time we played, but. I think uh, during the game, we uh, we were we were able to hold our own a little bit more physically wise compared to last time. At least offensively, our defensive line was not as physical as they were the first time we played. But you know, offensively and and throughout the rest of the, of the other aspects of the game is, you know, I thought we were, um, you know, we 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 belonged on the field, yeah. sort of say. Even though the score was lopsided, there was a lot of there was a lot of plays that um, could have gone either way and. Uh, we kind of got the short end of the stick uh, a lot of times, and so you know there were, there were, we were close to making some plays, and things just didn't happen. You know, we were close to you know making a play at the end of the first half that could have swung the momentum a little bit. You know, going going into halftime at, at 26 to 14, you know we had a you know fourth and 15 play where we were, were about to get off the field and we had a pass interference. So those you know those things we can get better at, right. and and hopefully. Uh, we do get better at them, and you know those things can make a big difference in the game. Well, you, you talk about the the exposure to a team like IMG. Uh, you could see as the game progressed how everybody started to become accustomed to their speed, right, and to their size, and how to work it. And, 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 and you say going forward, you know, everybody you play second, third, fourth round of the playoffs, even the fifth, state championship level, they're going to be at that speed or right. at that level. So now you've got you've got a definite ch a bookmark to say we've we've seen this right and you know that, and that's I know what us. to do right and that that helped us in the past and hopefully it helps us this year yeah no doubt okay with that we're, we're, when we come back from our first break we will look at the highlights of the IMG game from for last Friday night and then uh, uh, as well tonight we're having a, a, a guest one of our sponsors are, are going to be in here today 360 Orthopedics and they're going to talk about a few things that they uh, offer us and what they do for the, for the kids and the community as well so we'll have that later on as well. When we come back, it'll be the highlights from Friday night's game against IMG Academy. See you back here in a few minutes. we also like to thank the following sponsors for making this show a possibility. Absolute Aluminum. Neo Communities, because where you live matters. Sarasota Orthopedics Associates. And E.T. McKenzie. And a special thanks to Off the Wagon for hosting the John Peacock Coaches Show. And we're back here at Off the Wagon for the second part of the John Peacock Coaches Show. And Coach, you might just dive right into those IMG highlights. Let's do it. All right. Well, the game couldn't have started much better on defense. We came out, we were able to make a stop. You see here on second and short, uh, they tried to throw a deep ball here, and Chuck Brantley did a great job in the back of the end zone to fit in the pass. And he did a great job all night um, 
in the in the fence of the pass. I don't think they had any catches on Chuck all night. Yeah, he showed he showed what kind of athlete he was uh, again Friday night. And then third and short right here, uh, we're able to come up with another big play. You see, we we're able to get in the backfield and make a play in the quarterback. And uh, that was a you know good way to make make us stop, stand the first part of the game. Um, gave us some momentum getting the ball on offense and fourth down here again. We're able to make a good stop. The quarterback, he, he was a, a good athlete, didn't throw the ball very much. Right. But, but obviously, he, 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 he definitely moved their, moved their offense later in the game. He's more of a, well. a, a dual threat guy. And, yeah. Um, you see, we opened up the game. We had a nice nice pass here to, to Miles Weston. Uh, so he up here up the sideline, good protection, and able to Miles A get the ball right there and on their side of the territory. And, uh, you know, what a way to start. You know, we had some, uh, we felt real good about that. Um, and then later on here, uh, Malachi Weidman, the first pass to him, uh, we were able to come up and uh, score a touchdown here right to start off the start off the game, seven nothing. And I didn't mention earlier, but we had one heck of a crowd there on Friday night. Oh yeah, great crowd. Great and crowd they were started. loud, and they were getting into it. It was it was definitely a, a momentum uh, point right there in the game. So we we're up seven nothing, and um, you know, playing well. You know, felt good about it, playing well, and then, then we make our extra point here and. Kick, kick back off to him, and we were able to hold him again. You know, uh, two series in a row, and you'll see some plays being made. And then we come out, and um, we, we end up throwing a, a pick six, and uh, it, it, it kind of snowballed from there. It was hard to get the momentum back. But you see West here making a nice catch on third down for a first down, and you know, uh, it was just hard for us to get the momentum back. You know. On both sides of the ball, and I think a lot. You know, sometimes you know when you're, when you you run on a very fine edge where you know you have to do certain, almost things perfectly to to get get what you want to get out right. of certain things. You make that first mistake, and it's hard to overcome it right away. It almost took like a quarter and a half to kind of undo that what first that yeah. first interception. Yeah, you see Chris George making make a nice play yeah. there. And, um, and Chris Chris he comes up and makes tackle. He's a short tackler. He is a good good tackler. Let's see here, we make another play in the back of the end zone. That's, a, that's a freshman uh, Elliot Washington. You know, he had a heck of a deal where he had to play his first game against IMG. But yes. he had some had some experience there when we played uh, Plant, too. You see Rowan Foskin here coming up and making a nice play. Rowan had a nice game. He had a fumble recovery, turned about 50 yards, had some plays in the backfield, and he did a nice job. I did notice when they tried to run wide, they didn't have very much success. It shows the speed of our defense. You see Malachi here on a little tunnel screen where almost he almost uh, kind of squeaked through that. You know, he... Uh, He's really explosive as far as as tall as he is, is, you know, making those plays. Not only can he go up and get the ball at his highest point in the, in the passing game, but he's pretty explosive just uh, making some people miss when he gets a short pass to Yeah, he doesn't look as elusive as he is. He really is elusive. Again, defensively, you know, like we had some bright spots, but they had, they had three really good running backs um, and a huge, huge offensive line. So, you know, we had a, we had a tough, tough, tough time stopping those guys, and they kept kind of reloading and, Put a new guy in the backfield, but we were able to make plays throughout the night. That was a uh, bear on that on that. Yeah, yeah. Byer. Byer. Yeah. Byer. Yeah. He had a good game Friday night. And then you can kind of get a view of, of their of their size. Yeah, here's that, that fourth and fifteen pass interference kind of killed us, but um, you know that was that was right before half, and then we were able to drive down. We were actually coming in to score, and we ended up throwing a pick in the end zone, which which really really killed us, but. Uh, you know, Malachi. We, it, it was it was there there to make. You know, it was just yes. uh, just one of those things. They had two. They had double coverage on them, and uh, they were able to able to come up and make the make the play when they needed to. So there's another catch by West for a first down. Uh, we went for it a, a few times on fourth down. Um, yeah, but at that point, you you, you kind of you're trying to win. You know, right, what I mean? so right. what are you going to do? You know, if you say, "Oh, I'm going to punt every time," it's sort of seems and that's a heck of a catch. Yeah, one handed catch. That's a great, great job by Malachi. You know, that's what I was kind of saying in the paper. You know, we, we could have played it out a little different and the score would have looked a little closer. But, you know, we're trying to win the game. And um, again, another catch by Malachi. You know, Malachi and Wes had a good good night. And um, it's only going to get better. So, you know, the more comfortable that Nico gets with those guys and the more comfortable they get with offense, it's only going to get better. And Nico, you know, he played a lot last year, but he didn't throw very many passes. No, I think he threw four maybe. Four, yeah, so you know. this is, this, you know, Two games in now, and he's, he's he's had two good tests. You see, again, we made some plays in the backfield. You know, at times, at times we made plays on defense, and we held our own. And, and other times, we had some poor tackling. And we we worked a lot of a lot of tackling this week, and hopefully, we're going to get better at that. Yeah, and again, like I said, that's 
it, 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 some of the athletes that they're, they, they're running backs, they're, they're special. You know, three guys are special. Yeah, there's uh, Brian Taylor make, making a nice catch down the sideline. Brian didn't get too many opportunities to get off on as far as running was concerned, but well, he, he played yeah. a nice game. Ball security was good. We kind of knew going in that it was going to be tough uh, running the ball. So, you know, we, had, we were going to have to rely on the, the passing game. You see, again, that's kind of what I'm talking about uh, with him. You know, not only can he go go catch a deep ball at the high point, you know, he can he can catch a slant and a five-yard hitch and make that into a big gain or two. Which, as a defender, makes it and turns it into a nightmare. Yeah, and there was a, you know, there was a lot of instances on defense where, uh, you know, we had assignments blown, just mental errors when, we, you know, we have, you know, the defensive end has an assignment and the linebacker has an assignment and they were kind of getting those screwed up at times where they're both doing each other's job and um, that hurt us a lot in the, the defensive job came too. So, you see Malachi going up to get this ball here and double coverage and getting the first down. So there was, there was definitely some bright spots in our game. Um, you know, we just got to, we just got to hone in on what we're good at and, and get better at it. Absolutely. And then uh, defense again, they, they didn't they didn't seem to worry. I mean, there was, there's no fatigue. I'll say that, too. We didn't look fatigued. I mean, it was, it was definitely a physical game. They're bigger than us, but we didn't look like we were, you know, yeah, we had a, our we had a few like we had a few bad plays. You know, we had you know, we had a few bad plays where we missed some tackles. See, defense again, we come up with a stop here in the goal line. Um, which that was, I was real, real, real pleased to see that. And this is a situation where I think they had multiple shots at it too. Yes, um, yes. And we were able to come up with a stop, which is, is very pleasing. And you see right here, we caused a turnover and on third and third and five, and um, Rowan Foskin comes up with a fumble and gets it back to about midfield, which was, uh, that, I felt like that was a huge play and, it, you know, something that we can build off on defense. It was a nice hit. Ball yeah. came right out and Rome was on the goal line capitalize. making a play. You know, it's, yeah. it's tough. It's tough to make plays down there. And when you get a stop and especially a turnover, I mean, that's huge. Good pursuit to the ball here. Yeah, Good great gang tackling. Yeah, great job by the defense. So next to no quit. Nope. There was never right to the last play. It was it was uh, it was all out. And again, the defense, they had a, you know, they, they again, another another opportunity to learn. Another opportunity to get to get better. See again, uh, Wes. You know they had double coverage. Those, you know, I didn't I didn't think they were going to give that much respect to our receivers. But every time those guys were uh, singled up on one side, they double covered them, um, uh, which was surprising. Again, you're going to see what I'm talking about with just how shifty he is and how quick Malachi yeah, is. Yeah, one just step. A, just some different different type stuff that uh, I don't think that a lot of people were aware of. So, Coach, that was the highlights from Friday night's game. And like you said, you know, you, you see there, there was a lot of positive plays. Uh, again, great effort on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. And I said, like you said, you came away with some things to correct. And hopefully uh, Friday night uh, it culminates with a, a big win against St. Pete. Yeah, like I said, I mean, there was, there was some bad plays in the IMG game that um, made the score what it was. And, and like I said, it, a lot of it was a result of, one, either not executing on offense or two, you know, poor tackling on the defense or not knowing our exact assignment on defense. And I think those things are going to be fixed. Well, I know those things are going to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, we're going to have another opportunity with a team like this um, when we play St. Francis. Yes. So I, I think that's going to be a great opportunity for our kids to see, like, where we, where we started and then where we are when we play them. Yeah. And then, you know, hopefully b keep building off that and where we need to be when it's the third and fourth and the state championship game, hopefully. After that game, the push off is the district. Right. And you're going into the heart of your schedule, the most important part of your schedule. So you've got the beginning that where you've got the first opportunity at a, a nationally ranked team. You, you, then you end this little part preseason yeah. or beginning of the season thing with a, a game against St. Francis, another nationally ranked team. So you can you can push off from here and see. Then you can sprinkle Coco in there as well. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, so yeah. Um, we're gonna have. We're going to have other opportunities against elite teams and national teams, and uh, I think I think what we're going to end up seeing is we're going to end up closing that gap throughout the year, just because of the people we play, and we're going to coach those kids, and they're going and they're going to practice hard, and we're going to do the right things to take those steps. And I think by the time we get there, and we play a St. Francis again, and when we play a Coco, another team, I think you're going to see the gap kind of start closing. I agree. I definitely agree. All right, we'll take our next break, and when we come back, we'll have a uh, special guest. 
uh, from 360 Orthopedics, one of our sponsors. And we'll discuss a few things about what they have to offer us in the community and everything else. So we'll see you back here in a few minutes. We also like to thank the following sponsors for making this show a possibility. Absolute Aluminum. Neo Communities, because where you live matters. Sarasota Orthopedics Associates. And E.T. McKenzie. And a special thanks to Off the Wagon for hosting the John Peacock Coaches Show. And we're back here at Off the Wagon for part three of the John Peacock Coaches Show. And uh, once again, we'd like to thank Off the Wagon for hosting us uh, uh, once again tonight. Uh, great food, great atmosphere. So come on out to Off the Wagon and, and uh, join uh, Tommy and, and his staff uh, for a great night out live music here uh, during the weekends and uh, just come on out here and see uh, what they got to offer here at Off the Wagon. With that, we are having the opportunity tonight to have one of our sponsors uh, come on our show and talk about kind of what they do for us and what they do in general. Uh, this is Dr. Julie Beret and Julie is with 360 Orthopedics. Yeah. Julie, thanks for coming out here tonight. Great, great to be here. And, thanks uh, so much. Yes, no problem. And uh, we were talking earlier before we started, basically, um, what, what do you provide as far as services to, 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 to Venice High School in regards to uh, the orthopedics and, and the health of our, our athletes? Yeah, so, um, you know, as we know, football is an athletic extreme sport yes. and um, we want to keep the kids healthy. Uh, one of the things that 360 Orthopedics has provided is uh, we've provided some braces for the linemen um, to prevent knee injuries, which oftentimes can happen during football. Um, you know, knee injuries are a pretty common injury just kind of with day-to-day -day activities, but certainly with football and with the linemen um, having, you know, heavy load, pushing up against the defensive linemen or the offensive linemen going back and forth. Um, oftentimes there's a lot of stress and strain that's, that's taxed on the, uh, the ligaments of the knee. This is just a knee model. Sure. And so we've got the medial collateral ligaments on this side, the lateral collateral ligaments on this side. The main knee ligament is the anterior cruciate ligament in the front, and this is one that can be more commonly injured. So um, by providing the team with the braces, um, you know, that at least can minimize a the risk. Um, there's been several NFL studies that have shown that this helps decrease the risk of injuries. Um, and so that's something nice that we've been able to provide with the team, and I think that's been helpful. Um, you know, we've got three branch locations in the Sarasota and Venice yes. and uh, Lakewood Ranch area. So I'm anchored in our Venice area, so I'm available to, to take care of kids, um, you know, when injuries happen same day appointments type thing. But, you know, as orthopedic surgeons, we, we see people just in the office as a day to day thing, but also, you know, in, in the surgical realm as well, if need be. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we were talking so. earlier too that nowadays, uh, especially at Venice High School, we're about injury prevention uh, right. as much as you want. You, you say you want to prevent them as much as possible, right, right. especially with a young athlete, because, you know, once they start to have injuries, then right. it, it could be a, it could be a shortened career. And some of our athletes are are playing on, a lot, I should say a lot of our athletes are playing on the, the next level in college. Right, right, and such a testament to the great program that Venice has accomplished and amassed over the many years here. Um, and, you know, the coaches and the trainers are doing an incredible job at, at you know, kind of getting the kids conditioned to minimize those yes. uh, injuries and, you know, the athletic trainers, like I said. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it is really important and, and the coaches notify you, um, you know, if, if a kid's hurting or if, if something's happening early in the game. What can we do to prevent this, settle things down a little bit so we can get them back in the game? That's one of the goals that we have as physicians is getting the kids back in the game as quickly as possible, but at the same time safely Correct. so that family and parents know that, look, we want your kid back in the game, but we also don't want to do anything that might harm them further. And that's one thing that a lot of folks aren't, aren't aware of is that no athlete goes back on the field until they're, they're released to go back on that field. Right. It's, not a, it's not a coach's decision. It's not right. a family decision. It's right. up to the doctor to make sure that happens. And right. that's very important because, you know, when you're young and you think that everything's good and you want to tell everybody right. you're feeling right. okay, it's really, you know, that it could be maybe a little bit of a white Absolutely. lie because you got a big rival coming up that day for, right. for sure. Um, also, you know, we were, we were also talking about, you said about prevention, whatever, but again, injuries are going to happen. Right, uh, right. Rehabbing injuries. Uh, can maybe you can explain a little bit how maybe you guys yeah, work with rehab, that as well. Rehab. Um, we we also house a physical therapy facility in our Venice location and our other office locations. Physical therapy is amazing because I mean the success of how someone recovers and gets back on the field has so much to do with the physical therapists, the athletic trainers. So like, for example, if I do surgery on a kid, I mean, the success of my surgery is gonna depend on how the kid himself or herself does, you know, rehabbing right. on their own as well as rehabbing with a therapist. So it's a, you know, kind of a multimodal approach. It's really important that everybody's involved on the same team and the goal ultimately is to get the athlete back on the field. Yeah, and again, a lot of that is, is, is on them too as well to make sure they follow up with, with therapy. Uh, 
I have, I have family that have had different injuries and whatnot, and one of the one things that they, they tend not to do is the therapy. Right, and really, right. you know, everybody thinks that, that what you do once you put in, oh, it's all healed and we're good to go, and let's go out there and give me, give me three weeks to limp around and it's okay, right. but really, the ultimate the situation of being better is gonna be with the, with the rehab. Absolutely, it's, yeah, definitely, the, when you rehab well, it makes us look good. Yeah, so. no doubt. Uh, kind of a sidebar, uh, you, you obviously have a background in football. Yeah, your dad yeah. was on uh, Bobby Bowden's staff back yes, in the day, and, yes. and, and so you are an FSU graduate. A FSU graduate myself, and uh, kind of a proud Seminole. Um, so it was it was great being able to experience that growing up and, and being around high school and college football myself, and, and seeing the importance of that's what got me interested initially. Seeing the importance of how a team physician kind of is integral in you know keeping people healthy, and um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun seeing being a part of that. I mean, I remember I was in undergraduate at the time Deion Sanders was there and we would have our family dinners at the field house and he was he was something to be something to be uh, experienced. Yeah, yes, at least. no he doubt. You said you're, you're the last notable player that your dad got the coach was Derek Brooks, which Absolutely. in this area, oh, Derek he's Brooks done such is a, phenomenal is, uh, such job a legend and a great human being, right. great guy. You see how he's involved in the community. And right, it's really right. fantastic. Giving back. So, no doubt, yeah. no doubt. Well, Julie, we appreciate you having here Thank tonight. Thank you. It's great uh, to be here. It's great appreciate what you guys it. do for us. We really do appreciate it, all your Absolutely. stuff and your sponsorship here for the John Peacock Coach Show as well. Happy to be here. Yeah, and um, we're available for same day appointments when people need to get in. And uh, yeah, just happy to be able to serve the community in the best way I can. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's Dr. Julie Bure with Thank 360 you. Orthopedics here with us tonight, our guest at Off the Wagon and the John Peacock Coaches Show. When we come back, we'll wrap up tonight's episode of the John Peacock Coaches Show. See you soon. We also like to thank the following sponsors for making this show a possibility. Absolute Aluminum. Neo Communities, because where you live matters. Sarasota Orthopedics Associates. And E.T. McKenzie. And a special thanks to Off the Wagon for hosting the John Peacock Coaches Show. And we're back here at Off the Wagon for the last part of the, uh, our show tonight. And Coach, uh, once again, thanks to Off the Wagon, Tommy and his crew, always doing a good job for us. And thanks to all of our sponsors. It was nice to have Dr. Julie Bure here with us uh, in the last, uh, last uh, part of our, our show. And she talked about all kinds of interesting things that uh, are very important to Venice High School as far as care of, of, the, of the athletes yes. and, and rehabbing and all that kind of good stuff. They did a great thing. They gave, you know, I think what was it, two years ago, they gave all of our linemen uh, knee braces. Um, so that's been good. And some of the kids are still wearing, like Thomas Schrader, uh, still wearing them. So it's pretty, uh, they do a really good, nice job over there. At the college level, you see it a lot. I think almost every college yes. team, they, they wear them in the games. They wear those knee braces and you're pretty prominent. And I'm surprised that if I was an offensive lineman and I had a career and moving forward, even as a pro, I probably would want to have the same kind of protection because. Yeah, I mean, all the pros, all the college guys. Yeah, it's, they're it's, expensive, it's, though. I mean, so yeah, it's, it's no makes doubt. It tough. But um, yeah, they do a nice job and uh, we're excited that they help us out. Yeah, no doubt. I guess. And then and nowadays, as I said, conditioning and everything else is such a vital part of what we do. Right. And so it's really important that you have a, that extra layer from, from somebody like 360 Orthopedics. Yeah. No doubt. All right. Friday night coming up tomorrow night. St. Pete, uh, what do they what do they bring to the table offensively, defensively? What, what's their what's what, what are you looking at as far as uh, what they have? Well, well they're a wing T team. Um, we we played them in the past. They're they're more running their wing T out of a shotgun style offense okay. now instead of where they were typically where we, we played the last two times. They were under center. Uh, they're always coached well. The kids are really really tough. Like I said, Coach Fabrizio uh, does a very nice job. He's a good football coach and he's been around a long time. Uh, they they have lost uh, a, quite a few players to transfer this year. I'm not sure why or what happened, but I know that uh, quite a few guys have, had left. I think the quarterback actually tried to come back, and he said he said no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, you're no longer welcome yeah, here. Yeah. You you already chose what you wanted to do. So, right. um, I you know hats off to him for that. Yeah, um, no doubt. So, you know we're going to face a, a disciplined team that's going to be they're going to be tough. I mean you, you've you've watched the St. Pete team twice. They're always yeah. tough. So we're gonna have uh, we'll have a battle battle on our hands. Uh, like I said, they're they're a little down as far as um, body wise because they had some kids transfer. But like I said, Coach Fabrizio does a nice job. He knocked us out of the playoffs one year, and we thought we were gonna win a state championship uh, in the first round as a runner up. I think they were nine and one, and they were actually a runner up to a, a seven and three team. That I think Manatee actually got the better draw being a runner up and than I think we what, did. I think when I remember what happened, it was like it was sort of a fluke game that they lost right. in the mud the and first, rain or something like that. It was like, like the that. first, yeah. one of the first games, district games, and it was, you're right, it was something, something crazy had happened and there was a, quite, a, quite a bit of turnovers. And uh, so they dropped that game and it knocks out the first round. And then, like I said, the next year they were 10-0 and, and 
um, we knocked them out. So we've had we've had some good games against them. And Venice traditionally has always played them. I know when I was growing up, my brother played against St. Pete. You were, um, that's who you remember. I remember yeah. that. It was funny because you, you different different points of the, from view from the, being a kid when I was there. I'm like, I remember this place. You know, right. it's, it's the same. It's, it's it's an old stadium, but now with new turf, like you said. But same place, and Venice always yep. played St. Pete. They're going to be de dedicating the turf when we play, so they're, they're hopefully we have a good crowd. And um, you know, like I said, we're excited and uh, nice time to redeem ourselves from the. Yeah. IMG game and kind of you know we're, now we're kind of playing a regular high school you yeah know, back to playing no so that, that'll be a little bit a little fun for us you know because we're not getting off the bus like going holy cow look that guys that guy's going to Clemson <laughs> that guy's going to Alabama that guy's going to yeah. you know I don't do that anymore but you know the, I know the kids do so I know that kind of maybe plays in a little bit of their psyche and maybe we're gonna over hopefully we'll overcome that because we will face other teams in the same style but um I think that was, you know, a little bit of their psyche going in, like, wow, the guy's playing at Clemson, he's going to Alabama, he's it's going. It's hard because you know, if, at home, you know, you, if your mom and dad are sitting around, who are you playing this week? And then you look, go down the, the list of the yeah. players and you say, it's startling. Sometimes like two years ago, the, the their defensive ends now the best defense lineman for Clemson. You yes. Know? You know, so it's it's a uh, it's definitely a fun game to play, and um, we're going to play them again in the future. Um, but you know, we're off to regular high school games now, and we're going to. Um, we're going to try to become a better football team each week. And I think that you're going to see that. And I think that that's definitely, you know, as young as we are on defense and as, you know, the new players that we have that are finally, they're starting to understand everything and get a concept of what we do and how we do things. And I think everything's going to, is starting to come together. And we're a little bit behind where we, we normally are this time, but I think it's coming together pretty quick, quickly right now. We talked about it again, some of the players that are, that are new to the system, young players and whatnot. And a lot of them are very athletic, fast to the ball and yes. defense or whatever. But you're also you're gonna be fast to the ball and not going in the right direction. Right. And right. but you, you I can see again near the end of the game last last week and hopefully more this week you'll see that 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 speed is going to be going towards where it needs to be going and that's just a learning process. Yes. And they get better and better and better. And that goes also for a quarterback. You know we took for granted maybe for four years having the same starter before you know before Hayden was the starter last year. You know Nico's been around the team, but now you're the man. So right. now you have now you all those things and you, you would come in and you'd run specific plays that you practiced on. But now it's, you know, situationally, you, you're 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 it's could be second and nine. Right. And you're never in on second and nine. You were you're always in on second and two. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it, exactly. it, it's all different. And it's, and to now have a, a regular game has got to be it's going to be good. And I also like the fact that we're, we're on the road. I, I, I've always said to people that ask me, I said, you know, you want to see focus, yeah. a lot more dial in. There's you no want, time off. And, you know, you want to see the how what how things work right with Venice. Watch how we travel. And we've always traveled with such discipline and, and, right. and, and always been uh, very focused and, and, and everybody knows where to go. And sometimes you say to yourself, how do you get all these 15 to 18 year old kids in the right frame of mind? And it, it, it is, and they've always been very good on, on the road, and I think that's a testament yeah. to what you guys do. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think that's really going to help us. One, being on the road, and just you know, you know, the schedule is bang, 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 and you know, there's not much time to think about like what are what. Oh, I'm bored. You know, let's what, yeah. let's talk about something. There ain't nothing nothing to talk about except you know playing St. Pete. So we're 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 happy about that. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, probably going to be a muggy night, I would think. Is this, isn't it always? <laughs> it's that time of the year. Yeah. So hopefully that new field won't be full, slippery and rainy. Could be raining, um, you know, with a storm coming too. I mean, yeah. so, you know, it doesn't really matter. We're, no, at this time of the year, you're, you're, you're right. You're playing football yeah. and you forget all about that kind of stuff. Right. You know, the weather is, it, it's it's secondary to what's, what's going on out right. there for sure. All right, Coach. Well, uh, again, Friday night, uh, if you guys are, can make it up to St. Petersburg High School, it's not that long of a ride, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, an hour or so. Yeah, not straight bad Straight over at all. the Skyway, and you're right in downtown St. Pete. Oh, Francis is going to be live, live streaming it, too, if you can't Absolutely. make it. Absolutely, yeah. So watch the live stream. Everything will be uh, be available to you guys. And uh, just check the uh, our website, and you can you know where to go for all that good stuff. Yeah. All right, Coach. Well, thanks again for coming out tonight. Uh, we'll hopefully be talking about a victory over St. Pete when we come back here next week. Let's hope. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you here next week on the John Peacock Coaches Show.